business. So you've been doing some writing recently, and I understand you have a chapter in a book now that's uh, that's come out. You tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the book is called it's it's called Soul Companions, um, and it's um, uh, it's by a woman called Karen Sawyer, who's mm -hmm. Welsh, and it's it brings together forty five uh, people from around the world who've had um, uh, experiences with with spirit. Mm -hmm. And in very in different ways, some some very some very very different stories, very different contrasting stories. And my story is in there about the the um, the yew tree, and my my earliest part of that story. Um, and that book is is available. Um, it's been it's published. It's now it's now been published. It's available in the UK. In the, in the in the US. In the US, it's and, available through all books. All books. Oh, yeah. And what? And what about in UK? Where is that available? It's available. Um, you can you can get it the same. It's all books, mm -hmm. as in as in all, all. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's just called Soul Companions. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. It has um, some very interesting people in it from uh, across the world, um, and uh, people like David Spangler from mm -hmm. Finn uh, Finhorn. Finn yeah. Finhorn. Sandra Ingerman, um, Ross Nichols, the, the and Druid, and um, Oh, quite a few, quite a few other very interesting characters. Sounds really interesting. And our friend Andrus. Yeah, Andrus Arthur. Andrus Arthur is in it too. Yeah. So yeah. Wonderful. So yeah, that definitely. So if someone came to you and they wanted to do shamanic work with you. What might happen? A whole number of things could happen. Yeah. I mean, um, I would first I would want to know why they were coming to see me and what they want, what they were, what they were after, and then I would have to make a decision whether I would even feel that it was the right thing for me to be working with them. Mm. And once I've made that decision and feel okay about that, and I may ask for advice and guidance for that, um, then I will set up a place where we can work safely and make sure they feel safe and um, supported. And then I will just uh, create a sacred space to, to, to in order for the work to unfold. And uh, I may use sacred objects, I may use some bones, I may drum, I may use my voice, I may use my hands. Um, we may do some talking, mm -hmm. but it can all. It's going to be. It will be different every time, depending on yeah. where individuals has come from. And because things are so individual, I know this is going to be a little tricky to answer. But how might someone, like, what might someone feel during the process or after the process? Like, what are some of the typical things that people tell you? Typical things, yeah. People will will have incredibly with my work. They seem to have incredible body experiences. Like, like vib sensations, sensations, vibrations, vibrations heat, cold, um, dropping, lifting, rising, um, spinning, all kinds of things like that. Um, uh, and then maybe moving into some other dimensions as well. That will happen. Um, uh, you might see things too. See, I absolutely. Seeing things, uh, lots of visual, visual, and, um, visual um, images, um, fractal stuff, all kinds of things. Languages sometimes even. Mm -hmm. I worked with a woman once had a language written onto her bones, and we had to work with that in terms of how we were going to work with it, something that was holding her back in life. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, a lot of bone, working with bone, blood. Bones um, and blood. Bone, blood, yeah. um, organs, um, and, uh, and what that means in an extended sense. Yeah. And do you find that your healing work, um, like people have different strengths, like... Um, working like more physical healing emotional healing spiritual healing what what's the i'm sure this, it's like across the board because it always is but mm. what what seems to be your strongest suit i i like to i i always think of things as being a i always try to think of things in terms of wholeness mm -hmm. i know it sounds like a kind of glib answer but it's, no, it's i feel that i feel that i always try to engage with the whole mm -hmm. and if i can keep my if i can keep my sacred space and the whole um in in a kind of a, 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 a relationship, a relational sense through the session, then I feel that um, uh, what will happen will happen. So for me, it's about a sense of a wholeness. Mm -hmm. So so through that, somebody might not, you know, they might walk away from the session and then you get a call a few days later saying that something has profoundly shifted in their life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you know. You know right, so the, something, so they do, you work on their body, their psyche, their spirit, emotions, and then life situation changes. The life situation changes. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is the thing, when you, when something profoundly shifts inside of you, it changes uh, perspective. And when the perspective changes, reality changes. 
Absolutely. That's just the Absolutely. bottom line. That's Absolutely. how it works. That's a good way of putting it. Definitely. <laughs> just, just how it works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, talking to me today and sharing your wisdom and um, your experience with all of us. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. And so happy you're here in this world. Thank you, Sylvia. It's always a, it's always a great pleasure to be in your company. <laughs> Michael Dunning, he's a good man.